Yes. So yeah, I was working for Robert the writer on Mythic Quest, his his show on Apple TV, uh, and would watch a lot of football in uh, our lunch breaks. I'd sit around the writers' room table, and I don't quite often have uh, you know football on my laptop on silent while we were eating our lunch. Um, and he would always kind of make fun of me for it. And then at the start of lockdown, I made him watch a documentary called Sunderland Till I Die, um, which kind of gave him this snapshot insight into the nature of soccer fandom, football fandom here in the UK, the, the, the sort of semi-religious uh, obsession that we have here uh, um, with, our, with our football teams. And that was the thing that I think got him, well, not I think, I know, because he texted me right after, he was like, that was incredible, I love it, we should buy a football team. Um, and and then three years later, here I am talking to you. So it was a very, uh, extremely weird, but a very wonderful thing to be part of. I think there should be a formal 9 a.m. phone call every day where I where I get ritually thanked. Uh, but no, they. I mean, listen, they are having the time of their lives. They love it so much, and I think it started out as a thing where they, you know, they were kind of looking at the bigger picture and like, well, this would be cool to do and it would be amazing to do this for the community and this seems like a really fun way to kind of, you know, use our our, our celebrity and, our, and our, our means to do something cool and good. But then they really fell in love with the football. Like that became a thing that the, the football was kind of secondary to the what they were doing for the community. Now I think they are starting to go, oh, this actually, the football is awesome as well. So uh, they're having a good time. Burden isn't just that promotion. It's not ever letting down this community. The life of a football club, the stuff that I found most fascinating and gripping in the first season when I watched it was more about the people in the town, the players in the team, like the, the, the challenges that all those people are facing in their daily lives and the ways in which the football club kind of intersects with that. And that's very much the same this year. You know, you're going to meet a whole new raft of people. You're going to see lots of familiar faces that you may know and love from the, from the first season. Um, and, you know, hopefully... I don't want to spoil the ending, but might, you know, might, there may be some celebrations that people can enjoy watching towards the end. The women's game is growing so rapidly. They're dominating. When I'm on the pitch, a fire within me explodes. Wrexham is the most special gift I've ever had in my life. Uh, those episodes I really love. There's a couple of episodes in the season that cover the women's team, and, and I'm so excited for people to see them because the thing that I love about it the most is that these women are all fans of the club. They are all from Wrexham or the surrounding area uh, who have had this incredible opportunity to, you know, go and watch the men on a Saturday, be fans, and then on a Sunday pull on their jerseys and, and be the players and have, you know, droves of fans come out to watch them play. Want more entertainment news? Follow On the Red Carpet on social and subscribe on YouTube.